God, you are mighty, Lord. We lift you up in this place. Let's place your hand on your mind right now. Let's ask him to focus up, Lord, and that we could remove every distraction in our mind. Break down every stronghold. In the name of Jesus, God, I break down every stronghold in my mind right now, Jesus. Remove every uh, distraction, Lord, in this place tonight, Lord. Help us to focus our eyes on you, Lord, and our mind on you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy, God. I pray, Lord, that you remove every evil thought from our mind. In Jesus' name, place your hand on your heart right now. Remove every single sin, Jesus, God. Clean me, Lord. Search me, God, for any secret sin, Jesus. God, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. I repent of every sin right now, Jesus, I pray. Clean my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. God, wash us with the blood in Jesus' name. Forgive us, Lord, right now. Now let's lift up our hands. Let's ask God to use us tonight in Jesus' name. God, use me tonight, Lord. Help me, Lord, to have a breakthrough in this place. Use me, Lord, to help my neighbor get a breakthrough in this place, God. Change us, Lord, tonight, Jesus. God, let's leave here changed. Let's leave us delivered, Jesus. God, you are worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Lord, you are mighty, Jesus. God, move in this place tonight, I pray, Jesus. God, I pray that you would bring a breakthrough, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bring revival, Lord. Let's praise him, God. Let's thank him, Lord, for what he's going to do in Jesus' name. God, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor, Lord. God, we lift you up, Jesus. We magnify you, God. Lord, you are good, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Give him a hand clap of praise in this place tonight. In Jesus' name.
Lift up that name right now. God, there's none other beside you, no one like you. No one can compare to who you are. Hallelujah. There is none more able than Christ our Savior. If you are in need of a healing tonight, your time is now. And he is able. If you are in need 
of a breakthrough tonight. He is able to break the chains, to tear down the walls, to get rid of any anxiety, any worry. He is able. Hallelujah. Let's lift his name up right now. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you are good. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost move right now. Hallelujah. It's coming through as a rushing mighty wind right now. Let it fill you where you're standing. Come on, keep lifting his name up. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he loves it. He loves your worship. He loves your praise. the name of Jesus to give praise to that name the only saving name amen you can make your way back to your seats as we prepare to give in our tithing and our offering 
There are several ways to give here at the Pentecostals, and you can see those ways on the screen behind me. If you are in need of a contribution envelope, just raise your hand and our ushers will get that to you. There are a few announcements that we have tonight. And uh, this Wednesday will be our small groups. And I don't know about you guys, but my group's the best. No, <laughs> all, all, all the champions crew give a shout out. <laughs> and uh, I, I think I'm a little biased. How many of you think your group's the best? See, I, I'm just a little biased because everybody thinks their group is the best. But I love small groups. I love fellowshipping with the people of God, and I love all the food and, and the fellowship, and uh, it's going to be a great Wednesday night. Also, Sunday, May 2nd, uh, it's going to be at 10 a.m. only. Uh, there will be a baby dedication, so if you have a child that you want to register for the baby dedication, you will register uh, with the online form at the Pentecostals.today. You can also go to the POK.com. It will forward you to that website, and you can click on member forms. Sister Pamela will also post a link in the member uh, PG on Facebook and register by Wednesday, April 28th to allow our team enough time to prepare for the necessary items for the baby dedication. So if you have a baby, register online, member form, and we got it. Are you ready to give to the Lord in your tithing and offering tonight? Let's go ahead and stand. Our ushers are already at the front. And let's lift our tithing and offering to God and let's ask him to bless it. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this place. God, I'm asking you to touch every single giver tonight. Allow them to feel your blessing. God, allow them to see it overflow in their life. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can bring your tithing and offering to the front.
no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Everybody say, there's no shadow. to 
be better than good to me, Jesus. Yes! Oh. Oh. I don't know about you, but when I think about where I could have been, when I think about where he could have left me, I'm so thankful that he came to find me, that he was chasing after me. Just tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I don't have any other motive, but thank you, Jesus. I didn't come with an agenda tonight, God. I just came to say thank you, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't we lift our hands and our voice to the Lord right now? Why don't let's just do that for, for right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the mercies. I do not deserve you mercies, Jesus. But nothing can separate us from our love. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, let's lift up thy name. Let's lift up the name of Jesus right now. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for being a merciful God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, yeah, see ya. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us. Somebody's got to hear that tonight. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We praise your name here in this place tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, church. You may, may way, way back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like what I feel in this place here tonight. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place here tonight. You believe that? God is not done. God, in fact, he just got started. Tell your neighbor, God just got started here tonight. Miracles will be happening here tonight. Deliverance will be happening here tonight. Believe that? Amen. Thank you. We want to welcome you at this time. We want to welcome you to the Pentecostals of Katy. If this is your first time or second time with us, you should have received a first time or second time guest card. If you did not get a, a guest card for first time or second time, my ushers are making their way in. If you need one, you can fill it out. There's some gift associated with that at this, uh, on, on those. So if you did not get a first time or second time card, you can raise your hands or Osha will get one to you. Also, at this time, we want to go ahead and welcome our online audience and those that are listening to Revival Radio at this time. We want to welcome... <laughs> Hallelujah. I know there's, there's quite a few families, quite a few folks are at home are watching online, so we want to welcome them as well. At this time, I'm, <clears throat> we don't have a first-time guest, but we do have second-time guests. When I call your name, and I apologize in advance for for mispronouncing your name. But when I call your name, if you can raise your hands, we want to know where you sit it so we can come, come and greet you. Second time guest tonight, Agustin and Vanessa Escamilla. Agustin and Vanessa Escamilla, welcome. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy. Glad to, got, to have you guys over here as well. We also have some special guests here tonight with us. We have, uh, we have the Rao family. We have Patrick, Mindy, and Cooper Rao here with us tonight. Welcome, good to see you guys back again. It is good to have you in this place tonight. Also, we have 
Josh Landry and his wife in this place tonight. Josh and your wife, good to have you here as well. Thank you for being part of the Pentecostals of Katy Church. If we can stand, we're going to put five minutes on the clock. And we're going to go ahead and greet our guests at this time. Let's greet each other in Jesus' name. Amen.
for my help. I'm so thankful that no matter what we're going through here, there is help that comes from a higher place. My help cometh from the Lord, the psalmist David said, who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night, but the Lord shall preserve thee. He shall preserve thy coming out and thy going in from this day forth even forevermore. I am so thankful that God keeps and preserves and protects. There's nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. Amen. There's nobody like Jesus. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Very quickly, I just want to say, uh, join in with all uh, that's been said already and welcome our guests. Good to have each of you here. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee, and uh, I'm the senior here, uh, pastor here at the Pentecostals, and uh, we're so glad that you're a part of our service today. I do want to say it is so good to see Ariel, a little Hadley here, and uh, where are you, Ariel? She, oh, she stepped out. All right. That's what happens when you have 40 or 50 kids, uh, but... Um, we are so, uh, so thankful to have a few of our own back in service with us today. And uh, little Ariel grew up uh, in this church, and uh, it's so good to see her. She's actively involved in ministry. Her and her husband, Ryan, are uh, serving in ministry in St. Louis, Missouri. We're very thankful for what God is doing through their life. Sad to see them go, but I'm glad that, that God has, is using them. It's also great to have the Rao family. Amen. <laughs> Amen. For those of you that are new to the Pentecostals, those maybe perhaps you're watching online, you may not recognize uh, the Rao family. Uh, Brother uh, Patrick Rao and Sister Mindy both served in leadership here at the Pentecostals for many years and uh, has preached behind the, this podium, or at least in this location, I should say. I don't think this podium, but... Um, it, it, and uh, so there are many that are here that uh, are familiar with the Rouse and uh, his job transferred him to Ohio and he's been up there working in ministry and serving uh, the, the, the kingdom of the Lord and again we're sorry to see him go but I'm very thankful that God is using them they're actively serving in ministry and it's good to have their, their, uh, their youngest with them Cooper good to see you buddy I don't know you probably you don't know who I am but I'm glad to see you and uh, we love Cooper, and uh, it's so good to have uh, this family here with us. Anytime we have a guest minister, we always like to hear a few words from them. And so, uh, Brother Rao, it's good to have you here. Grab that microphone and come greet the Pentecostals here uh, this evening. God bless you. Put your hands together. Let's welcome Brother Patrick Rao. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Wow. What what changes time has wrought. When we left, it did not look a bit like this. And, um, and a lot of the young people that we, I hope, influenced, influenced for the better, are now young adults, it, it, it so appears. And, um, and as my eyesight has gone over the past few years, uh, things around here clearly have, have continued to change for the better. I am so excited, Sister Lavelle, Praise the Lord. It is so good to see you. <laughs> I am so excited to hear um, about the capital campaign and the future plans. I mean, that, that has been a dream for this corner of Katy for a while. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's what I have learned, if I have learned much, that Satan can throw his best at the kingdom of God. And occasionally something might stick, but it doesn't stick long because the Jesus train just keeps moving. When God has a plan, as they say, come hell, high water, creek rising, whatever, nothing can stop what God has planned. It is not always true that we know God's plan or understand God's plan, but that is not what is relevant or important. There is one thing that we must hold very deep in our hearts, and that is a firm conviction that whether we know it or not, God has a plan, and we simply need to make sure that we're part of it. 
to be in a place of action, a place of response, wherever, whenever, and however God will bring about the plan. I want to be part of it. I am convinced that in the past year, that a lot of things have happened. You might have heard about it, but there's been this little pandemic that's been going on that's changed a lot for our world. And, but it hasn't changed a lot, I believe, for the kingdom of God. Because everything that most folks had predicted would be the outcome for the Christian church during all of this has proven to be wrong. What I have seen is that God has continued to move, that people have continued to be faithful, that the house of God has continued to thrive, that people's walks with God have continued to thrive, that we've grown deeper in the Lord. As the world has gone up in smoke, as chaos has reigned, God has proven He's still has a plan. Amen, amen, amen. And one day, one day soon, if we just keep trucking, if we keep on with the Lord, we will all hear the sound of a distant trumpet. And at that instant, His plan is going to be complete. Hallelujah. And if you think it's loud on a Sunday night at the Pentecostals of Katy, well, you probably don't want to go there. Because it's going to be loud, it's going to be long, and it's going to be forever. We all stand behind, stand in front of the throne of grace and worship our King. I wonder if now we can do that together. Just worship our King one more time and give Him praise for His blessing and goodness in Jesus' name. It's God. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I want to do one more thing. You may be seated very quickly uh, before we move on. Thank you, Brother Rao, uh, for those words. We, we love this, this family dearly. And again, he served in several positions. He was making reference to the youth because he served as a youth pastor for a while, but he also served as a pastoral assistant in several other places within the church, and, um, and we appreciate them. Uh, I do want to mention uh, Dr. Wilson is out of town uh, preaching in, in uh, Washington uh, State. This weekend, and so we're gonna, we we certainly miss them. He's got several leadership things that he's doing there, and uh, he'll be back. But uh, we like to celebrate stuff around here. Anytime there's an accomplishment, something good happens, we like to celebrate it. And I mentioned in the service this morning, but we're so excited that out of all of the people in the United Pentecostal Church uh, that may qualify. Um, Brother uh, Doctor uh, Eugene Wilson has been uh, nominated and selected, elected as the brand new president of Texas Bible College. And we want my purpose in saying this is twofold. One, we want to celebrate it; it's awesome. But two. Don't worry, he's not going anywhere. He's still going to be here, and uh, but he, uh, he he is going to be involved in in uh, in uh, the Bible College, and and I know you know he, he's he's a great delegator, and, and he can work well with teams, and so we're very excited about that. You are going to see more involvement of uh, and support of Texas Bible College. We have long been a strong supporter of Bible College, and uh, in, in particular TBC, and. Um, it was, it was my alma mater, and uh, it's where I attended, and I feel like it changed my life. And so we have long invested in this. We've, got, we've had students at Texas Bible College probably for the last 15 years or so. Uh, every year we have, a, we have a, somebody that's enrolled in, in Bible College. I was told by one of the presidents previously that our church has had more uh, young people attending are sent to uh, Texas Bible College, not including the other Bible colleges, and we've had many, but just Texas Bible College alone, we've had more students sent through uh, the, the Bible College than any other church in the United Pentecostal Church or any other denomination. Very excited about that. And uh, as a matter of fact, when he told me that, he said, nobody else is even close to you guys. So uh, I'm very thankful for the support that we've had and and engaging young people in ministry. Much of that starts in our youth services and the activities. We get young people busy. And whether or not they're called to preach is irrelevant. Everybody has a ministry in their life. And Bible college isn't just for people in full-time ministry. 
Amen. It's for people to go and, and, and uh, learn about the word of the Lord. So uh, just wanted to share that little bit of, of good news that, that uh, Dr. Wilson has been uh, elected. And uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing more from him about that. You'll probably be seeing more Texas Bible College students hanging out around here every weekend. And so we're very excited about what the Lord is doing. And uh, God is good. Amen. I also want to mention this past week, we had a lot of our young people, I think around 26, 27 uh, young people that were participating in um, the uh, Southwest Youth Conference. And there was also a, um, a live recording, uh, Brother David Jennings, who preached our uh, Friday Night Fire service uh, here a few weeks ago. Uh, did a tremendous job. He had a live recording there. And so our church was involved. We had several of our folks up singing in this recording, uh, heavily involved uh, in the conference. And uh, my wife sang on one of the songs that they recorded. That, whoop, whoop. And uh, that was awesome. But also I was so proud. I was, a, I was a proud dad. I went to it because not only was my wife singing, but they were recording, I think, three or four songs that Savannah wrote. Uh, and so... Thank God for that. And uh, so I'm very thankful. Tremendous, tremendous conference. And all those that attended, so good to see you back here tonight. Glad you all made it home safely. Amen. Thank God for the wonderful choir that we have. Come on. Why don't you come lead us and put your hands together and let's welcome the POK Choir.
gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. God is worthy of our highest praise. I said he's worthy of the highest praise. The best that I can give. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is power in our praise. There is nothing, nothing in the world that is healthier, that is more strengthening, that will encourage you, that will lift you more than praise will. Amen. I, I, you know, we, we talk a lot about lifting him up and exalting him, but what we're really doing is that we are declaring him greater than what we're facing. We're declaring him greater than the problems that we're enduring. He's going to be God. He is going to be God all by himself. He's great whether you acknowledge him or not. He's a healer whether you recognize him as a healer or not. He is a deliverer whether you feel like he's able to deliver you or not. He is still God and he's God alone. Amen. He's worthy of the praise. The good news is, is that when we begin to praise the Lord, that God gets involved in our circumstance, we suddenly become a part of lifting up the Lord. Amen. And while... Scripture says, if the Son of Man be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It, yeah, we, we often define it as, as a reference to the cross, how that if he would be lifted up on the cross, that he would draw all men. But the same is true for you and I. They lifted him up in torment. They lifted him up in execution and accusation. They lifted him up in condemnation. But the church has a different responsibility than the world. When we lift him up, we lift him up in glory. We lift him up in praise. We raise him up to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We don't lift him up on a cross, but we lift him up on his throne. And God is worthy of all of the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Amen. It is good to, to be in the house of the Lord this evening. So thankful for all that's happened thus far today. You may be seated just for a few moments. I, I want to just say again, thank God for all that's happened today. Had some, a lot of brand new things that have taken place. I know uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we have a brand new sanctuary uh, in the church. And uh, our brand new youth sanctuary, it's, it's exciting to see what the Lord is doing, and, and uh, I believe they're uh, getting ready. Have you all opened up the coffee shop up there yet? Next Sunday, is the, is they're, they're uh, opening up a brand new coffee shop upstairs just for the youth, and it's exciting to see what God is doing in the church. we got a lot of things that are moving forward very quickly, and um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's just exciting to be a part of something that's moving. Amen. And uh, so, so, so grateful. Uh, you know, it, it, we, could, we could just dedicate a portion of every weekend service to all the new things that are happening. Now, maybe we ought to do that. Just talk about the good things that have happened that week and the progress that we have made. But more important than it all, I am so thankful for the new families that God is adding to our church, our local assembly. And uh, it's been exciting. Amen. Yes. It's been exciting to see what God is doing in our church, and I want to remind you to continue to be a soul winner, be an evangelist, make, make an effort to, to win souls. Uh, you know, so often we, we disconnect and detach ourselves from responsibility when we consider the world. Um, and, and often it would be so easy to, to save somebody. You know, Every one of us have had an experience of losing someone close to us, and we wish we would have said something. I wish I would have told them one more time that I love them. I want you to know that, that there are people that we pass every day that are that close to eternity, and, and there's a praying mama somewhere, and there's a sibling somewhere, and there's a pastor somewhere, there's a grandma somewhere that's praying for those individuals that we pass so casually and, uh, and walk past and deal with as a cashier and 
and, and they're praying that somebody would take just a moment to speak a word of encouragement, to invite them to church. We've made it, we've, we've sort of empowered you to do this. It's so simple to do. Uh, out in the foyer, you're going to find some church invitation cards. We encourage everyone every weekend, pick up some invitation cards, have them with you. It's so easy. You don't even have to say anything. If you get shy, you know, and, and talking to people, inviting them to church, whatever, you can just drop the card on your table at a restaurant or hand it to somebody to drive through and invite them to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not only should we, we be reaching out, but we should also be uh, caretakers of our brothers and sisters. If you notice somebody is not here, it takes just a moment, just a moment. Don't assume somebody else is reaching out to them. It takes just a moment for you to send a text to somebody. Hey, just want you to know I missed you in church this weekend. That's all. You don't have to carry on a long conversation. Just tell them, hey, listen, just want you to know I missed your smiling face this weekend. And uh, let people know that you care about them. I think it's so important. How many have had someone reach out to you at a low time in your life and it made all the difference? Amen. We, we've all had those moments where we felt despondent, discouraged, and yet at that particular moment, somebody just offered a little bit of love. They offered a cup of water, something to eat. They, just, they were just a friend in those critical moments and encouraged us. And so I want to remind you, be involved. Uh, and then if you, you know, it, it's just a good practice. Several weeks ago, or I guess a month ago, we, uh, with one of the small groups that met at our home, we made a decision that we were going to uh, make a practice that once a month, just once a month, we're going to take a new family, not just others in the church, but a new family or perhaps a family that has been missing a lot. We're going to reach out to them and we're going to go to lunch with them. Doesn't mean you have to pay the bill. It just means you're just going to lunch with somebody. You know, meet, them, meet up with them for coffee. Uh, and, but just be a friend to somebody. At least once a month, we're going to make that effort. And uh, I believe if we, if we will just do those three things, I think the growth that God has for our local assembly, the revival that God has for us is it's, it's guaranteed. We're going to have revival. As long as we keep preaching this apostolic truth and... Uh, and we keep praying, we keep worshiping, I believe that God is going to give us a harvest. As I preached this morning, we all want the moments of glory. We want that glory moment. But, and, and, and thank God for what he's done in the past. And we're just waiting for the next glory moment. But in between the glory, there is a two. Glory to glory. And that two is where many of us live. And we get stuck in the two. We get stuck in the dash, the hyphen, the, the gap between glories. And, uh, and, and we need to continue to sow in the two. And I believe that God will take us to that next glory uh, much quicker and uh, much more efficiently. But so good to see everybody here. Turn around and smile at somebody next to you. Smile at them. Even if you don't like them, smile at them anyway. Even if they don't like you, smile at them. As a matter of fact, look for somebody that's not smiling and smile at them until they smile. Just keep staring at them. Say, I'm not going to look away until you smile. Makes him nervous, just keep smiling. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. I, I, I do want to uh, mention before I bring our speaker to the podium, I, I want to say that uh, Mother's Day is coming up uh, just a, a few weeks. How, how many? Three weeks. Three weeks away. And we're, we're trying to plan some special things for that. I want to encourage all the mamas. You've got kids that are prodigals and wayward you've got grandkids put the pressure on now okay start working working them now and say hey, listen this year for mother's day what i want you to do is come to church with me all right and you can get me flowers you give them you know get the chocolate the all the goods but just tell them as a special gift i want you to come to church with me i'm going to do my best to preach and and we're going to we're going to have revival and going to see the Lord move on, East, on, uh, on Mother's Day, not Easter. Easter's over with. But uh, I, I want to encourage you to, to uh, do everything right now. Start preparing the way so that uh, uh, Mother's Day morning, every year we have a massive crowd on Mother's Day. And so I want to encourage you to, to bring your family and we're gonna, we'll be talking more about that later. Amen. I am so thankful for the ministry team that God has given our local assembly. We are so blessed. I hope you know that. 
For those of you that have never been part of another apostolic church, maybe you haven't traveled around much or visited many churches, uh, you may not fully appreciate what God has given our local assembly. We've got folks, not only on the platform, but scattered throughout this building, ministers of God that are, that are very gifted, they're diligent, they're, they're preachers, God uses them in, 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 in powerful ways. And uh, if you're new to our church, this is, a, this is not a one-man show, all right? We're, there, there's a phrase that's often uh, used called pastor-centric. This is not a pastor-centric church. Yeah, I, I understand my responsibility to lead, to guide, to cast vision, but this church is run by teams, by people, by folks of all different strengths, all different giftings, and I am so grateful for the team that, that God has assembled together to minister, to care for the needs, and push and promote revival here in this city. And. Uh, I, I love hearing all the reports after service on Sunday mornings. Exciting to see what God is doing. On Sunday morning, you don't see a lot of them because they're ministering in other places. I think on Sunday morning, we have, what, five services going on? Is that right? Spanish, English, Spanish, youth, preteen, and children's. Okay, so five different services are happening. Uh, and and uh, now we did have m several more uh, in our, with our nursing home ministry. But right now, because of all COVID stuff, that we've kind of had to put the brakes on much of that. But we're a very busy church on Sunday morning. We're kind of spread all over the campus. And so there's a lot of ministry that happens that we may not see. We have services. We have an early morning service that many of you, uh, you may not know the people that come on Sunday morning faithfully, but we have a whole group of folks, a little congregation that comes every Sunday morning at 8 a.m., service from 8 to 9. We also have a group that comes on Wednesday night from 6 uh, until 7. We all show up at 7.30 and we think we see everybody. There's a whole other group we just missed. And so I, I'm just so grateful for all those that are involved in ministry. And uh, it, there's nothing quite like getting involved in ministry. So if you haven't found your ministry yet, you need to find a ministry. I'm not giving out towels tonight, but I want to encourage you, find a place to serve. There are plenty of places. We, we, I don't, I don't like using the word, we need help, because it implies that there's a deficit. God will make it up, okay? If you don't step into your role of ministry, God will find somebody else. But what an honor and privilege it is to know that I'm being used by the Lord. And, and uh, there, there are places that you can actively serve in ministry in, all, in every department of the church, practically. And so I want to encourage you to find a place to serve. Uh, find a place to apply your skills and your, your talent, your interest. There, there are places that you, can, uh, that you can serve. If it's children, if it's tech, if it's translation, if it's uh, uh, prayer ministry, uh, you want to you know, work in retail. And we, we got retail covered too with the cafe. So a lot of different areas that you can serve. So I want to encourage you to find your ministry. All right. I said all that. Uh, to say that I am so thankful for our youth ministry and uh, I believe that God has given us the best youth pastor in the world right now. Amen. I am so thankful. Amen. Now, now, he doesn't serve alone. I love that he's a team builder. He's building teams of people that help him, that work with him, he and Sister Gage. But I am so thankful for Brother Justin Gage and the leadership that he is uh, demonstrating and casting vision, not only in the youth, but many areas of our church. And I appreciate him so much. And we have asked him to come and preach the word of the Lord tonight. I want you to stand to your feet. He blesses our congregation every time he ministers. Amen. Put your hands together and let's welcome Brother Justin Gage as he comes. Let's give that to the Lord. Somebody clap your hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, if you're going to preach with me tonight, you better clap your hands. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's nowhere else that I would rather be on a Sunday night. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the honor and privilege to be here tonight preaching to each and every one of you. I'm excited about what God is doing in our church and in this assembly. Before I get into the word of the Lord tonight, I want to say a special thank you to all of those who for the last four weeks have been here working with us until 2 o'clock in the morning most nights, getting up the next morning and going back to your normal jobs. 
sacrificing and investing in another generation of apostolic young people who are going to shake and transform this world for the cause of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your sacrifice. I know that there are quite a few of us who are ready to see this construction project come to an end. Can I get an amen from some of those who have been up here? Brother Mario in the back. But man, it's so worth all of those late nights and early mornings when we stood up there last Sunday morning and preached and saw people getting the Holy Ghost and saw lives being changed this morning again. It was worth every hour, it was worth every dollar. So I say thank you for your investment in our young people. If you have your Bibles tonight, I would ask that you turn to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 32. 1 Samuel 17, verse number 32 says, This is after David has come to bring food to his brethren. And he hears Goliath making a mockery out of the children of Israel. He sees Goliath making a mockery out of God's people. He is upset about it. And he said, is there not a cause? And then we pick up reading at verse number 32. And it says, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Saul said, There's no way, David, that you can go and wage the war that you are trying to fight. And then in the next verse it says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and I slew him. Saul said, you're not able. And David said, hold on there. Let me just tell you what's been happening in secret says, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of of the bear he will not he might not he could but he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine and Saul said unto David go and let the Lord be with you I want to preach for the next few moments on the power of winning secret battles the power of winning secret battles Set your Bibles to the side and let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, your word is anointed. God, I ask that you anoint these lips of clay. God, I ask that the power of the Holy Ghost would move in this place, that the gifts of the Spirit would be in operation, that every chain and every fetter that your people have brought into this house would fall and be demolished at the name of Jesus. Lord God, we lose healing right now in this place. Lord Jesus, let deliverance, come on, let the captive be set free in the name of Jesus. We believe that you're going to do it. And everybody said in Jesus' name. You may be seated. The power of winning secret battles. It was the spring of 1780 when American military morale was at a low point due to their May 12th loss to the British forces. It was just a few months later after that loss in Morristown, New Jersey, where George Washington's army was beat down and depressed from one of the worst winters that had ever happened during the Revolutionary War. 
The national economy was failing. Troops were short on supplies. And it seemed but for a moment that all hope was fading for these patriots who were fighting for a better tomorrow. It was George Washington who began to plan out an attack on the British-occupied New York City. It was the plan that Washington devised that he came up with this plan out of desperation. He knew that he had to risk it all or face certain defeat. The battles that ensued from his planning and his preparation of the armies were the battle of Connecticut Farms and Springfield in 1780. These were two smaller battles where the American forces gained ground and they gained strength and it propelled them to eventually win the Revolutionary War. While these battles may not ring a bell when I mention them today, it was Edward Lingle, a military historian and writer, who said that some of these small battles that were won during the Revolutionary War were some of the most pivotal battles that propelled them forward to eventually win our freedom and our independence. You see, it was the strength that was gained from winning small battles that propelled our countrymen that were fighting that day to go out and fight a bigger battle. Some of us today want a Goliath moment. We are wondering when we are going to get the opportunity to fight a big war. While all the while we sit in a congregation on a Sunday night dealing with small battles in our mind and in our marriages and in our homes. We want greater battles, but we don't want to defeat the small devils that we face on a daily basis. No doubt tonight across this place there are battles of fear, battles of addiction, battleness, battles of holiness and separation, battles of loneliness, battles of lust and pride and maybe even the battle of homosexuality. There are battles that are raging in the minds and in the lives of all of God's people even though you are saved, you are sanctified and you are occupying a pew. Just because you believe in one God and you have been filled with the Holy Ghost does not mean that you are able not to have to fight battles anymore. Just because you understand that Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord doesn't mean that the devil stops chasing you. James 2 and 19 says that thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. It doesn't mean that you get to stop fighting battles just because you get the Holy Ghost and believe that there is one God. You see, we read a story in our scripture text tonight about a man named David. David, no doubt, is one of my favorite characters in scripture. David came to a battlefield just to deliver his brothers some food. And he hears this Sasquatch of a man spouting his big fat mouth. Just think for a second, how big of a mouth does a nine foot four man have? He probably didn't need any more monitor, any more PA. He just did it all on his own and he opened his mouth and he was talking against God's people and God's people to me because of their inability to confront the small battles in their life, nobody was willing to stand and wage war against a big giant because they couldn't even win the war against the little things that they were facing. And David hears this guy running his mouth and he says, you know, who is going to do something to shut this cat up? Because I don't know what God you serve, but the God that I serve doesn't get treated like this. The God that I serve doesn't get pushed around like this. The God that I serve doesn't tolerate this. And David said, is there not a cause? He poses that question in, in the verses right before where we read tonight. And it was his frustration that allowed him to get a little radical. 
You see, it was David's, uh, he didn't understand why are we dealing with this? We've got to fix this. So many times we come into the house of God and we deal with absolutely way more than we are supposed to be dealing with. We fight little devils and little battles and we come to the house of God where there is freedom and where there is liberty and we just sit there and let the enemy run their mouth and do damage to our mind and our family and our spirit. But we need a spirit of David in this generation that steps into the house of God and understands that I didn't come here to play patty cake. I didn't come here to see my friends. I came here to wage war on the battles that are going on in my life. So David speaks up and he says, you know what? I'm not going to tolerate this. And here comes the super spiritual old brother Saul, my brother David. Are you really able to take on a giant like this? Oh, brother, maybe you should rethink that. Maybe that calling wasn't for you. Maybe God got that wrong. Maybe God didn't mean that, David. Hey, brother David, maybe you should just go back. And even his brothers were upset at him saying, David, you've lost your mind. A little bit of oil gets poured on your head and here you are ready to take on the Sasquatch. You're ready to, to go do all these things just because you got a little bit of oil on your head and you got a call and you got an anointing. That's because David understood that the call and the anointing of God that was upon his life was meant to defeat and destroy every battle, every giant, and everything that rose up against him. But Saul tells him, he says, David, he says, you're too small. You're too young. You're too weak. Look at that giant, David, and look at you. When was the last time that you looked at yourself in the mirror? I think we have an issue where sometimes we look at ourselves in the mirror and we see somebody who's beat down and defeated. We don't see what God sees when we look in the mirror. I can tell you today that when God looks at you, he sees somebody who is victorious. He sees somebody who has a call and an anointing on their life. He doesn't look at you how you look at yourself. So David, after Saul tells him pretty much what he thinks of him, David says, you know what? Let me just tell you about some of these secret battles that I have been fighting and winning that nobody really knows about. You see, so many of us want a Goliath moment, but we need to be able to win secret battles that wage in here and in here before we are able to face a Goliath. David responded to him by telling him the story of the lion and the bear. I've come to tell somebody tonight that the next time the enemy tells you that you're not big enough and that you're not good enough and that you're not spiritual enough, you need to go to the book of Revelations 12 and 11 where it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You need to begin to testify to the devil that if I was able to overcome this addiction, I can overcome this giant. If I was able to overcome this stronghold, come on, what is another one? You need to begin to testify to the enemy on some of the secret things that you have been winning behind closed doors. David told Saul about the battle that he was winning when nobody was looking. Can I just ask you today, are you winning the battle behind closed doors? Are you winning the battle that takes place outside of this church on a Sunday morning? Some of you today, I can tell just by knowing your testimony, you don't look like what you've been through. Some of you don't look like what you've been through. You see, Saul expected when David told him that he had fought a lion and a bear to see a young man before him that had been maimed, that had some claws on his eyes, that maybe was missing an arm, but David was whole because the hand of God and the anointing of God was upon his life. And when secret battles came and the lion came and the bear came, David was able to destroy them because of the anointing of God that was upon his life. David walked into that battlefield that day whole, having won secret battles, having fought things behind 
closed doors. He grabbed five smooth stones. You know the story. And he killed that chump Goliath and he left him there and he cut his head off. And it was the end on that day for Goliath. All because one man was fighting battles behind closed doors. And when it came time for a man to stand up and stand in the gap, he was able to because of what he did behind closed doors and in secret. But you see, it was David on that day who gained more street cred. And he gained a story that is told in Sunday schools across this globe of David killing Goliath. But if the bear would have killed David, there would have been no David killing Goliath. I've come to preach to somebody in this house that there is power in winning secret battles. Some of you are fighting sins and secret sins that have attached themselves to your life. And I can just tell you that the enemy would love to tell you tonight that there is no use fighting them. And that you ought to just choose your battles. How many of you have just ever heard that? I'm petty patty. I like to fight. Okay. I don't know what happened to the apostolic generation of people where we've lost our fight. Well, brother, you need to choose your battles. You know, it's just a little bit of sin. It's just a little bit of this. You know, it's really, I know somebody else who struggled with that and got through. It was a two-year process. They read this book and that book, and they just got through it. The devil is a lie. If you've bought into that... Can I just come to preach to somebody in the house that if it is coming against your anointing and your calling, it's a battle worth fighting. Come on, if it's coming against your family and your finances, come on somebody, and your ministry, it's a battle worth fighting. I've come to tell you some of you need to pick up the word of God and you need to go to battle against the enemy. Hallelujah. It was Margaret Thatcher that said, that you may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. Some of us need to get back up. Some of you have said, you know what? I've been struggling with this sin a long time. Maybe I'm just like Paul. And it's a thorn in my flesh and I'm not going to get it out. Maybe, maybe God just didn't mean for me to be delivered. Maybe you need to pray harder. Maybe you need to pray through. Maybe you need a breakthrough. I've come to tell you that if you've got sin in the camp, it's not the will of God that you leave here the same tonight. Come on, if you've got secret sins and things that you're fighting, you may have fought it in 2020. You need to start fighting it again in 2021 because I can tell you that it's like a cancer. If you don't get rid of it and if you don't cut it out, it's not going to do anything but grow in your life. Come on, it's not the will of God that you go home battling that sin another night. It is the will of God that you step into this house and the preacher lays his hand on your head and you are delivered tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. But that's not how weak Christians with no spiritual backbone think. They're content coming to church and dealing with the same stuff for 20 years. And I just don't feel connected to the church. And I just don't have a ministry. And God's not opening doors for me. And God's not letting me sing up there. And God's not opening a door for me to go preach. God's not going to give you a Goliath until you defeat the lion and the bear in your life. Stop asking for greater things until you defeat the things that are holding you at bay today. was Michelle Janae who said that if you saw the size of the blessing that you are becoming, you would understand the magnitude of the battle that you are fighting. Some of you tonight have come into the house of God and you are living in all out hell. Your family is in chaos. Your ministry is a mess and everything that you touch seems to be falling apart. But I've come to tell you that if you understood the anointing, if you understood the blessing that was on the other side of that battle, it would give you the strength to rise up again one more time on a Sunday night and to come down to this altar and to be set free by the liberating power of Jesus name but I know that you may not want to fight and I know that maybe you've convinced yourself that it's just a little thing but little things matter 
Little battles matter. Garen and Gavin, can you come here for a second? Even Brother Tyler. Love to pick on Brother Tyler. Sorry. For some of you, this is object lesson number two. This from this morning. But little things. Yeah, you can come up here. You can come on up here. Little things matter. When I was a kid, we watched a show called Cops. It wasn't very spiritual. But my dad would always use it and be like, you see, if you go to messing around, you're guilty by association. See what happens? He had drugs in the car. You get pulled over with a buddy that got, has drugs in the car. You're going to jail too, big boy. I'd be like, okay. But when I would watch Cops, they would always use the same thing to restrain somebody no matter how big they were. It's amazing tonight that no matter how big Brother Tyler is, that if we were to handcuff him tonight, he could not go very far. Amen? Amen. See, some of us view sin as a little thing. Handcuff him, cuff him. See, Gavin represents the apostolic young men and women who come to church week after week and he said not so tight. Sin's uncomfortable. You're going to have to deal with it. Okay? And if it's not uncomfortable, there is a problem and that's a, we'll get to that here in a minute, okay? But we view sin as something that we control. And we say, you know what? It's just a little addiction. It's just something I do in my free time. It's a secret thing. Nobody knows about it. I can still come in here Jump up and dance a little bit. There you go. Look, I can still jump and I can still shout. And he just looks like Brother Gavin. Y'all just think he's got his hands behind his back, but no, he's bound, secretly bound by sin and by things, little battles that he refuses to fight and win. And you see, the thing about sin is it doesn't just want your hands. It wants your feet. Cuff him. We'll try. Time with rope. Do whatever you got to do. Sin... Sin's not picky, it just wants to bind you, so just use whatever. And then sin begins to grow. It gets from the point that nobody notices to now when he comes in here, he can't jump and he can't shout, and maybe his geographical position in the church is moved from up in this area to back in that area. Nothing against the people in the back. I love you, God loves you. It's just an illustration. And it grows, right? We can't, I don't know anywhere else to put them. I bought too many handcuffs. The guy at Party City saw me. He's like, is that all you need? And I was like, yes, sir, four pair of handcuffs. That's all we need today. But it gets to the point where Gavin can't really do much in service. It's because every time he comes in here, the enemy is whispering in his mind saying, I know what you were looking at last night, and I know what you were engaged in, and I know the things that you were involved in. And then there's no praise, there's no worship, there's no breakthrough. And the, de- the devil just keeps adding sins, and he just keeps adding condemnation until your bondage makes you lose your balance. Have a seat. You can't do that when you're my age, I'll tell you that. (laughs) And then before long, we wonder why our marriages are out of balance and why our finances are out of balance and why our walk with God is out out of balance. It's all because of the bondage that we are involved in. And then, if I was to tell you today, there's a fire in the building. Jesus is coming. You gotta get out of here. You gotta move. You You gotta get out of here. You might not make it out because you would be crawling. And see, that's the thing is some of us are spiritually crawling when we should be running. Some of us are so bound and we can't move to another level in anointing and in ministry and in anything because this is how we come to church Sunday after Sunday. And we're frustrated in our faith because we are bound by sin. And what started off is something little. What started off is just a click somewhere or just a look here or a look there. What started off is just a a little bit of indulgence in something has now turned into this. 
How did that happen? It happened because of little things. Little things, little battles. The power of winning little battles is something that you must understand. Is that I cannot allow a little bit of sin in my life. I can't allow a little bit of this or a little bit of that in my life because this is what it turns into. It was in the book of Solomon, he said that it was the little foxes that spoil the vine. It wasn't the big things. It was the small things that spoiled the vine. In Galatians 5, 7 through 9, it says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. This persuasion, this did not come from God. This is not what godly living looks like. And this is not what an apostolic child of God with the Holy Ghost life should look like. And then it goes on to say that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little bit of sin can have this profound effect on you. In the book of James chapter 1 verse 12 through 15 it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For not if, but when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You see, I can't tell you how many young people that I have preached to over the years that live in this situation Sunday after Sunday. I can't tell you over the years the amount of people that I have seen sit under my preaching who come to church just like this and they leave just like this. It bothers me. It gets under my skin. It's why sometimes I go to crowd walking in youth service and I start palming heads in the back because it's like if you ain't going to come up here and get it, it's going to come to you today, honey. You better get ready. It's because I'm tired of seeing young people and people who have the Holy Ghost live like this. Let me just tell you, you can live like this and come to church and still go to hell. Come on. But it's not the will of God that you live like this. It's not the will of God that you stay bound and you stay down. Come on, Brother Tyler. You've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave tonight. You're playing Jesus. I've come to tell you that it's just one encounter with Jesus. Jesus has the keys to set you free. Jesus has the victory tonight through the power of the Holy Ghost to set the captive free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands in the house. It's, it's a key to get him out. It's not touch the touch screen thing. There you go. Look at, look at what the Lord did. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Sometimes you got to pray a little harder. But it'll eventually happen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Untie him. That's it. We don't want him leaving half set free because he'll be half bound again tomorrow. Glory. Y'all can take those with you. Souvenirs. Don't fall. He's able to keep you from stumbling. You may be seated. I want to tell you a story of a close friend of mine. I only told this story one time that served on my youth committee for years. This man and his wife helped me build our last youth department. We more than doubled it. God was wanting to use this man in a mighty way. He was one of my closest friends. His name was Mo. It wasn't his real name. That was what he called him. His real name was too long. So we made a shorter name up, and that's what he was called. And Mo was faithful, pastor. He was 
At every youth night, he was at every conference. If I needed somebody to drive the vans, he was there to drive the vans. If I was preaching and needed a water, he'd go get me a water. If I needed him to come up to the church and work on a project, he was faithful to come up there and help me. He was a solid friend, a solid man in the church, but Mo had something going on underneath the surface that I didn't realize at the time, but I would watch him come up to the front and pray. And it seemed like that he got to a certain place in prayer and then he hit a brick wall. And he would come down and he would pray and he would cry. But there was never a true breakthrough and I watched this happen for years. For years he would come to the house of God and he would dance when it was time to dance and he would shout when it was time to shout. He would clap his hands when it was time to clap his hands. He would do all the things that you were supposed to do when you come to church. But you see, that's sometimes how we judge the spirituality of people. It's how they jump and how they shout and how faithful they are to the house of God. All of those are key factors in living for God. But if you can't pray through certain walls and get through certain things and defeat certain small secret battles, you better understand me that there's going to come a day that the enemy is going to see his opportunity and he's going to move in for the kill shot. And my buddy Mo was caught in a very inappropriate act a sinful thing that had been going on for years. A fleshly desire that had multiplied and grown and then it was acted upon. I'm sure that the kind of thing that he was engaged in was not something that has accelerated to that point automatically, but yet it was one click, one little small battle that wasn't fought that turned into a bigger battle and a bigger sin. And then before long, he was caught in what I call the sin cycle. And what's dangerous is when you get caught in a sin cycle and you can still come to church and the Word of God can be preached and the songs of Zion can be sang and you leave the same. Because this secret sin that you have on the inside of you is something that you've convinced yourself that you have under control. It's like a wildfire. There is no controlling it. Well, my buddy ends up getting caught doing all kind of ungodly things. And three years ago, today on a Sunday night, we would have probably been sitting in the same church three or four years ago in the same area ministering to the same young people. But because secret battles were not won behind closed doors, Mo today is serving a life sentence at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. A man that was filled with the Holy Ghost. A man that would come up to the front and pray. A man that would pray for other people. A man that was engaged and involved was fighting secret things and he couldn't get the battle. The battle won over the little things. And it wasn't until he couldn't win the little things that when a big thing came along, it overtook him. I can't tell you the amount of heartbreak that I felt hearing the news. I remember preaching a youth rally and right before I got up to preach, his mother came to me and she said, I need you to go and testify for him. He said, you are the only friend that he has. And I remember feeling all kind of emotion in my heart thinking to myself, I only knew the man that was here. I didn't know the man that was behind closed door. No way in my right mind could I go and testify to lessen the sins where if it would have been my child or my family member that would have been involved, I could have never stood there and really done that. How did that happen? How in the world did it get to the place where he was faithful to the house of God? But today he's serving a life sentence in Huntsville. It's because secret battles were waging, raging in his mind and in his heart and nothing was being done about it. You better understand this preacher tonight when I tell you that if you are not fighting the secret battles, 
It is only a matter of time before they are made public. And they will destroy your marriage and they will destroy your ministry and your calling and your anointing will be shaken. And things will not end well for you if you do not learn the power of winning secret battles. You see, I can't tell you how many times, Pastor, that I went down and prayed with him and I felt that something was just not right. So if I ever prayed for you, or one of these men ever pray for you and they latch onto your head and they don't stop when you think they ought to stop. Just understand that they sense something in the spirit that only comes out by prayer and fasting because that is how secret battles are won. You hear me. David learned to defeat the small animals and then he got the power to defeat a lion and a bear. It was because of the anointing oil that was poured on his head. It's because of the oil of the Holy Ghost that you can defeat the battles that have come against your mind and your ministry and your calling. You better understand this preacher in this house tonight. If you are not full of the Holy Ghost, you will not win the battle. That's why it's so important that when you show up at the refilling station on Sunday night, that you leave here to the point that you are so full that you are overflowing because the secret battles will be back on Monday morning. I know you're not fighting them right now, but you better fill up tonight with the Holy Ghost so that tomorrow morning when the enemy lifts his ugly head, you can give him a TKO punch and knock him out. Somebody clap your hands. I've come to preach in this house tonight that it is time to start fighting small battles. It's time to start fighting the secret things that are going on behind closed doors. It's time for us to get a hold of whatever it is that is hindering us from our purpose and our calling. I can tell you today that the devil is not afraid of you if you are at bay with secret struggles and secret things. It's like a dog that you let off the leash in a fenced yard when you come here on Sunday morning. He don't mind if you run around here and boogaloo and do all that because he knows that he's standing at the door when you get back in your car to put the leash back on your neck. So tonight at the conclusion of this service, we're going to shout and we're going to dance and there are going to be chains broken. I declare that. Come on. In the Holy Ghost tonight. But it better be more than a dance and it better be more than a shout because if you're going to leave here and not be hooked back up to the devil tomorrow, you're going to need something more than just a dance and a shout. You're going to need a chain-breaking anointing that when the man of God latches onto your head tonight, that the power of God falls and the chains begin to break and the devil is sent on the run and every demonic spirit that is fighting your purpose begins to leave. You see, David's key to winning the secret battles was preparation. It was the things that he did in secret. It was his secret time in prayer and understanding and, and knowing the word of God that made him know when he stepped onto that battlefield that I am not standing here alone. That when I walked onto this battlefield, I am standing here with Almighty God. See, some of you have believed the lie of the enemy tonight that you are fighting this thing alone. But I've come to tell you that Jesus Christ is in the house and he's here tonight and he's here to break chains and he's on your side and he wants to do a miracle for you this night, in this place, and in this moment. Some of you need to get your spiritual resume out that have been beat up by the devil lately. And you need to show him, you know what? It was about 10 years ago that I fought this and I won. It was about 15 years ago that I went through this and look, God's hand was upon me. Come on, you need to get your spiritual resume out and remind the devil of every time that God has come through for you and that God has won a battle. Come on, somebody. You need to remind yourself and remind the enemy that the God that you serve is faithful. Stand all over the building tonight. You see, some of us have taken our spiritual resume and we've thrown it in the trash. 
We've forgotten all the things and all the great things that God has done. Can I just tell you tonight that if God was able to fill you with the Holy Ghost and to pick you up from where you were, it is but a small thing. I said it is but a small thing for God to break the chains of pornography and addiction and lust and pride. Come on, somebody, up in this house off of your life and you can walk out of here with a new purpose and a new calling and a fresh anointing. Come on, I said it's the will of God that you leave here set free tonight. The last scripture that I am going to read in your hearing tonight. Ministry team, please get ready. Is Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith because I can tell you tonight that if you're going to overcome the enemy, above all, you better bring your shield of faith. You better come down here believing because when I make an altar call, if you're believing, these men have been praying. They know how to pray. They're going to lay their hands on, their, on your head. And we are going to cast the devil off of your life, off of your marriage. And we're going to cast every secret sin off of you. But you got to bring your faith tonight. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always. Not praying for two minutes when you come down here. Always. I'm going to ask you tonight that when you come down at the conclusion of this service, that you stay in a mind of prayer. A two-minute prayer might not do the trick tonight. Maybe it will for some, but you need to stay in the mind of prayer. And I'm going to preach one last point, and then we're going to pray. You see, the devil thought that he had David when he sent the bear. There's some of you tonight in this house that there is a bear that has been sent against you. And the devil was sitting back and he said, you know what, I'm going to get him this time. But the Lord stepped in and you defeated the bear. And then the devil said, you know what, I'm going to send something a little more ferocious. I am going to send a lion to defeat David. And then what did God do again? God defeated the lion. And then some of you are standing in this place tonight and you are facing a Goliath in your marriage, in your ministry, in your anointing, and there are strongholds in your mind. But I've come to declare tonight the word of the Lord is true. And at the conclusion of this service right now, come on, you are going to walk out of here whole. You are going to walk out of here victorious. You're not going to look like what you went through. Come on, I've come to tell you, the devil thought he had you. The devil thinks he has you tonight. But somebody's about to make a trip to an apostolic altar. Somebody's about to walk down here. Come on, and the power of God is going to hit you. And every secret battle that you've been fighting is going to be won. The devil thought he had you. Somebody come down to this altar and receive your deliverance. Thought he, had me. he thought come I was on. dead. He thought that he I thought you'd but give up. never dance again. Come on, the he didn't expect you to come down me. here and get he delivered. Thought I was dead. He thought that I would give up and never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I would give up and never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I would give up and never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I would give up and never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I would give up and never dance again. The devil thought he had me.
want you to begin to pray with somebody next to you right now. Sounds of travail in this room. Oh God. Bring a renewing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Begin to pray. Pray for somebody. It's
alter anything that God, I surrender it all to you. I surrender it all to you, Lord. All to you, Lord. All to you. Samuel Balboa is minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptized Nayara Balboa, according to Acts 2.38, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. spoke to our church tonight. Thank you, Brother Gage, for that word. I believe that God was in it. Amen. We must master the small battles of life. Amen. The great wisdom of Solomon was this, that it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. It's the small things, the little things in life that destroys. It's the way that we look at adversities oftentimes is not how God sees them. Amen. The truth is that greater enemies are easily knocked down because they're hard to miss. Amen. But it's the little foxes that are sometimes hard to destroy in our life. And it takes more diligence. It takes more effort. 
But it's those little things, if we don't get control of them, that's what destroys the fruitfulness in our life, the harvest in our life. Amen. And I believe it's the will of God. It's time to make a decision. It's time to, to be radical. You know, I've learned that if you're gonna, if you're gonna face those little things, you cannot just, you, you can't make allowances for sin. The Bible says give no place to the devil. We can't even, we can't even give him room to operate. We need to make sure that we establish some boundaries in our life that I'm not gonna cross those boundaries again. There's gonna be some things that I'm gonna conquer in my life. And, uh, and I believe that God is gonna help us. Amen. Amen. The scripture that Brother Gage read tonight talks about resisting sin and, and enduring temptation. From James 1, when we endure temptation, it said, we shall receive a crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. We keep saying no long enough. We keep resisting temptation. It's going to get easier. But you've got to start fighting the battle. You've got to start fight the battle. Amen. You say no long enough and eventually God is going to give you the authority. That crown of life is not talking about what we get when we get to heaven, but it's, it's a crown of authority over those issues in our life. And we need, some of us need a crown in some areas that, that have been ruling over us. We need to be the ones wearing the authority, wearing the crown in it. But if we keep saying no long enough, We'll get that crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Somebody once asked, well, how do I know that I've overcome sin? Whenever your sin and temptation become a ministry in your life. Whenever that little thing that you went through, you overcome it. And now you're using your victory to deliver other people. That's what people in authority do. Now I'm reaching out to other people that are bound and I'm, I'm helping them to get free. Amen. And I believe it's the will of God that we live in purity of heart, purity of mind, purity of spirit, that our lifestyle has, has, has no f errors in it that the enemy could use. Amen. Nobody could fight against and overcome Samson on the battlefield, but he had some secret sins and secret weaknesses that were able to do what armies couldn't do. And sometimes we can go to war and fight battles. Man, I'm... Holy Ghost, Jesus junkie, Jesus fan, whatever you want to call yourself. And, and yet in, in, in secret places, we're allow, making allowances that will destroy us just as quick as the Goliaths will. Amen. So we need to take a stand against them. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much again, Brother Gage, for that word this evening. I believe it was the will of God. So good to see all of our guests here. Again, great to have the Rouse here. Uh, Ariel, good to have you here tonight, and Hadley, and the baby, what's the baby's name? The baby's name, Hadley and Rayleigh, yes, good to have Rayleigh here, amen, God bless you, remember this coming Wednesday night is small groups, small groups Wednesday night, greet one another, talk to somebody you haven't talked to all week, don't wait for people to come to you, you go to them, make a connection with somebody tonight. God bless you, you're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Let's go change our world.